I just told my son I was cooking dirt for supper. He was so unappreciative. Kids. In today's video, we are talking about how to start onions from seeds. I am in Zone 5, New Hampshire, and I'm starting these onion seeds from uh, in February 20th. Today is February, February 20th. And these are the onion seeds that I'm starting. Yellow sweet Spanish onions. I don't know if you guys can see it from this distance. And onion red uh, red of Florence onion. I think that's uh, on the website it said like it's a shallot, but on the packet it says it's sweet. I don't know. Um, and yellow of Parma onion. I don't know if you guys can see it from the light. Anyways, so these are the onion seeds that I'm starting today. I'm also going to be starting um, some flower seeds and that's uh, the purple peony poppy, the, where is it, black peony poppy, um, dwarf stock, dwarf sissy mix, stock, <laughs> some delphinium, I, I don't know where I bought these seeds from, I don't even know if they're viable, but I'm going to try and most of the seeds fell into the container that I'm storing the seeds in and some sweet alyssum um, so that's for flowers and I'm also going to be making like a small indoor garden kind of like a kitchen garden and for that I want to plant some arugula some miner's lettuce, some wild za'atar, and oregano. Eventually I'll be planting these outside, the, probably all of them, we'll see. <laughs> but for now, I'm going to have them inside and enjoy them. And also this uh, micro tom tomato. I thought that would be super cool just to have that indoors. I you know, and you just kind of have like a mini kitchen garden inside under the lights and see what happens. I wish I thought about that earlier, but hey, I'm happy about <laughs> I thought about it right now. I'm, I'm itching to kind of like just have something fresh out of the garden and I can't wait for that. So I thought, hey, these are small plants. Let's just plant them inside. But today we're talking about onions. So let's talk about onions. <laughs> So it's true that you can buy onions from set, but the sets, but the number uh, one reason why you want to start onions from seeds is because onion seeds will give you bigger bulbs. Onion sets are actually a second year onion and what is going to happen is that the onion set is not going to put too much energy into growing a bulb for you, but it's going to put most of the energy into producing flowers so that you can produce seeds in order to keep reproducing and um, uh, spreading its genetics. They're a biannual. The, the onion sets are going to create a scape and that scape is what will flower and the flowers will then turn into seeds. Yada yada yada. So right here I have already pre-moistened my uh, uh, seed starting mix and you want to be sure to use a seed starting mix because as I have mentioned in my previous video uh, if you are using a potting mix or um, dirt from outside especially you're going to end up with a lot of weed seeds and uh, with insects and possibly dise diseases you probably won't have um, a uh, weed seeds in the potting mix but you might have some insects and and some diseases, who knows, if it's not ster sterilized. Uh, to prevent that, you could probably bake it in the oven a little bit at a low temperature, like, um, not sure exactly <laughs> how much, um, but like the lowest temperature that your oven would go to, and I would bake it for, um, I don't know, how long specifically? Um, you could research that. <laughs> And if, well, you know, when I do, I'll let you guys know. But the reason also why you want to start 
uh, with, in a seed starting mix, your seeds in a seed starting mix is because seed starting mixes are designed specifically for seeds uh, development uh, so that they can uh, mature the roots and the growth of the plant uh, when it's first uh, when it sprouts and it's uh, trying to put out all that energy into the roots and into the leafy growth and also seed starting mixes are much fluffier than potting mix and especially from dirt that you would get from, from outside and it's gonna help with uh, those uh, thin and spindly um, Uh, roots that the plants would have when they first start developing. Um, however, onions do have very wiry, wiry uh, seed, uh, wiry roots, not seeds. <laughs> uh, so um, they can handle, probably they can handle a potting mix, but again, if you are doing it inside, just do it with a seed starting mix because it's already sterilized, it has all the nutrients that the plant that a seedling would need, so just save yourself the headache and start with that. Um, ask me how I know. <laughs> so when you are planting onions, there are a few things that you want to pay attention to. Um, and uh, one of them is um, you want to see where you are living, how, what, type, what type of light do you get? Is it a long day? Do you get... Um, like uh, if you live in the northeast, for example, could be wrong on the. Not very good at geography. <laughs> I gotta look at the map, but um, for us, we live in New Hampshire, and um, we have very long summer days. And for us, we would need a uh, an onion variety that is um, for uh, that is a long day onion. So. Uh, that uh, bulb is going to start maturing. Um, it's going to mature better when it when the plant receives uh, a lot of sunlight and for a long period of time during the period of one day. Um, so uh, if you there are there are three types of onion seeds um, or onions in general. Um, there are the long day onion, intermediate onion, and short day onion. So you want to see what kind of um, days you have in your area and you want to pick the onions that would be proper for your area because those are, if you have short days, you want to pick uh, an onion variety that is short days so that you would have the best bulb production um, because the onions are going to um, produce the best bulbs for you according to the light that they are designed to um, live under <laughs> or uh, the circumstances that they are designed to live in. You know what I mean. I'm having a hard time explaining myself. Uh, anyways, so uh, so what do you need is a, again a seed starting mix and I have over here a uh, seed starting tray. This I love this thing. I'll leave a link for it in the description box below. Uh, this has I already have some seeds already in here from if you have seen the previous video that I've put out how to start asparagus from seeds. Um, I have some asparagus here. One of them already sprouted. The rest haven't yet. So I'm being patient. Uh, so you, you can see here this humidity humidity dome um, keeps the the seed starting mixture um, moist so that you don't have to constantly spray. It's been about a week since I planted these seeds and uh, you can see that this humidity dome is moist on the inside and so far I've only spritzed the uh, uh, the mixture, I mean spritzed the, the soil mixture. I'm not cooking here. I'm, Planting. You'll have to excuse me. <laughs> Two nights of not, in a row of not sleeping very well, so uh, I'm gonna be a little off over here. Um, so um, I've I've already I've only spritzed the soil three times during the period of uh, one week. So this humidity dome keeps it 
uh, it keeps the soil wet, which is awesome. You don't have to constantly moisten the soil all the time and, you know, all that. Uh, without the humidity dome, you'd probably have to moisten the soil several times a day, uh, depending on how dry your environment is. And then under, yeah, don't want to break anything in here. And then underneath here, there is a wicking mat, and the wicking mat sits under uh, over a fixture that lifts it off. And you can fill this uh, tray over here uh, with water as soon as all the seeds sprout, and then. Um, the seedlings would start drinking the water from here um, and yeah it's really cool so I love this thing oh and then over here I also have a uh, garden marker and uh, some um, uh, tags plant tags that I'm gonna be putting in here I already switched <laughs> from the from the popsicle sticks into these I'm going to be changing them because what I've noticed I've been using popsicle sticks for uh, so long and I always hate them and I had an idea also of like another idea if you don't want to purchase these um, where you could laminate if you have a laminator um, you could laminate a paper like right um, on the paper first what the plant is and then laminate it and shape it into whatever shape you want and then stick it in the ground that would probably work uh, but I didn't want to go through that hassle I have enough on my hands already that I need to do so if you are interested in getting these I will leave them also in the description box below so that's just super helpful and this garden marker also is waterproof it's ultraviolet proof all that stuff so we'll see I'm going to be trying it out this year and hope for the best. So for onions, I'm going to be, first before I plant the onions, actually I'm going to grab on another tray because this, I'm going to be planting my flowers over here. I'm sorry guys if I'm all over the place, like I said, I'm just super tired. Um, I'm going to be planting my flowers over here because um, I don't want to plant too much except for the alyssum that I'm going to be planting a lot of. Um, so I'm gonna have like separate trays for onions, probably one tray for each kind if I have enough seeds. Um, and um, uh, for onions, you can plant lots of onions in the same cell, so I'll probably be planting about five to ten seeds in each cell. I can probably fit ten seeds in, in these cells. They're about like two inch cell, I think, um, two by two. Uh, so. Um, uh, you don't have to plant like one onion per cell because um, onion onions, like I said, have very wiry roots. So um, when you come to pull them off, um, when they are when you are ready to plant them outside, uh, they would just pull off very, very easily if you just pull on the outer side of uh, the cells when you take it out, and you could just pop them in the soil. So, um, let me grab a separate tray and then fill it up with the soil. But before I fill it up, I would just want to show you, um, like, when you squeeze the soil, uh, it's dripping a little bit, but it shouldn't be dripping and it should hold together. I mean, I did squeeze it pretty hard. Um, and I probably just over wet it a little bit. It's okay. Not a big deal. Um, so, if it's like totally dripping wet, it won't be good, but um, basically it should not drip and when you, when you squeeze it and uh, it should hold together and then it should just crumble very easily, like you can see right here. Um, that would be the perfect mix for you. So let me grab the tray and then I'll show you what I'll do. So I'm going to leave about a quarter to half an inch when I fill the tray. Um, the cells um, with the soil so that um, I could just uh, cover the seeds with the dirt and I wouldn't have to um, like poke holes because like I said I'm going to be putting lots of seeds in here in each cell Just be 
feels so therapeutic. Oh, and I used hot water to mix the soil. It just helps with the absorption, absorption, and also if you have any like um, insects in there, it's gonna kill it. I used gardening gloves, and I'd like to use gardening gloves right now because I hate dirt under my nails. But just trying to be quick. <laughs> Also, I don't like to use gardening gloves when I'm planting seeds because I, it's just, it's so hard to plant seeds with gardening gloves on um, or gloves in general. So once you fill it, you want to pack it down because uh, you want the dirt to uh, be able to touch the wicking mat so that it would um, um, absorb the water whenever you water it. You don't want to push it too hard, but um, just enough. Okay, if I notice there's a cell that has a little bit too much dirt, I'm gonna take it out from there. I'm going to add a little bit of soil in some of the cells that I notice that are a little bare. So I don't want the onion seeds to be super deep. I think I'm going to start with uh, yellow sweet Spanish onions. I'm having a hard time doing this while I'm sitting. I think I'm going to adjust the camera and do this while I'm standing. It's just easier. That's better. <laughs> I think I can put a lot more than 10 in here. I'm just gonna go crazy over here. <laughs> Probably put about 15 or 20 maybe. I don't know, I'm going to estimate like I have maybe like 200 uh, yellow sweet Spanish onions in here. I didn't, I didn't count what I was doing, so I just took a bunch. So I'm going to take a tag and I'm going to write down the name of the, um, I'm gonna write down yellow sweet Spanish onions just to let to know which two rows I uh, used for that. I like to write on both sides of the tag. do that for both rows. Actually, yeah, it's okay. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna fill the next one with the yellow of Parma. I'm gonna fill two rows also, and then I'll have two rows of the red uh, Florence onion. Red of Florence or Florence, depends how you wanna pronounce it. Okay, let me show you what onion seeds are like. Can you see they're like flat, 
think I have, might have a little less seeds in this one than the yellow Spanish onions. Or I could be wrong, I'm not sure. So I'm gonna go a little lighter on this. Because I do wanna save seeds for next year if I um, am not able to grow seeds. We'll see. I would like to try to grow some onion seeds. Um, if I succeed in saving the bulb um, throughout the winter and then planting it again in the spring so that it would grow. Oops, uh oh. There we go. So that it would grow um, the scapes and give me some seeds. We'll see if that would work or not. I don't know, never tried it before. So onion seeds don't last for that long. Also, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, they don't have a long life, uh, meaning that um, after two or three years, you're gonna have very low germination rate. I think, I think it should be good. I use a lot of onions in cooking. Let me know, do you like onions? Do you not like onions? I use a lot of onions and garlic. And I'm gonna do the same with the tag also. I think I dropped the seed. There you go. So I will probably have two onion beds, two and a half maybe, or three, I'm not sure. I need to, uh, kind of think about the space and figure out how many beds I need for my onions and then I'll figure out what else I can plant um, in my raised beds because I do want to plant the onions in the raised beds because they have the best soil right now we are also planning on purchasing some compost and putting it all over our garden because um, the soil and what we call our vegetable garden is really bad. I'm going to be putting lime and I'm going to be, because it's very acidic, so lime decreases acidity. I'm also going to be putting some uh, bone meal everywhere and compost everywhere. So hopefully that would do the trick. I've been trying to build up that soil for many years. It's hopefully this year I would have a good success in there. It took me about five years, I would say, to have no four years, four years to have uh, really good soil in our raised beds, and I just kept putting compost in there and adding manure, and now I get really good um, really good crop from my raised beds but you have to always feed feed your beds <laughs> or feed your soil because um, you, the crop is going to use those nutrients so you can't just think that I feed it once and I'm done because whatever you plant there is going to use up a lot of nutrients and you have to replenish the soil for of whatever nutrients that were taken away from it. So compost and manure are a great way to add nutrients to the soil. Okay, so now I'm going to be planting Red of Florence onion. I'm alright. Oh! Almost spilled. These are sh like shallots, supposedly. We'll see. Um, on the bag, it says they're sweet. I'm curious. I like red onions. I wanted to get the big bulbing red onions, but I just went with this kind this time because I do want shallots also. And I thought, well, this is this. Um, it's red and 
it's sort of a shallot. <laughs> and you can see I'm being super generous in here. I'll show you just, oops, in a second how full each cell is. I really like this pen because it's not super thick. It's, uh, let me show you a little bit closer. <laughs> Don't mind my writing, it's, um, I have uh, chicken scratch writing right now. You can see it's not super thick, it's pretty good. Can you guys see how thick the seeds are in there? I mean, that is <laughs> insane. You would never plant anything like that, except for onions. You could, of course, you could make them a lot thinner than this. I just don't care. <laughs> um, and yes, I do have some of them pretty close to each other. That's just because the sides are sticking up. That's okay. It's all right. Um, again, like I said, you could put about 10 uh, seeds in here and you should be fine. Um, it should be easy to take them out of here. So now I'm going to be covering the top with the soil, the remaining soil. Hopefully I have enough. Hopefully I won't have to mix more. I will, of course, for the other seeds that I'm going to be planting. Now I have them on the deeper side. You could have them a little shallower. So now when I'm going to grab a spritzer and I'm going to spritz the top just to moisten the soil a little bit more on the top, over the top. Oh, I see an escapee in here. So that um, they would have, you know, uh, better success at germinating. Uh, just so that the top where the surface is touching them would be extra moist and they would be able to spray, sprout easier. Uh, over here I have a uh, water and hydrogen peroxide mix and um, what, I, what I did is I mixed uh, two teaspoons of hydrogen peroxide, two teaspoons or two, one tablespoon, I don't remember exactly, into a gallon of water and I have been spritzing my seed, the seed starting mix, uh, I've been spritzing my uh, trays where I planted my seedlings with this mix. The reason why I'm doing that is because it's, if there's like any mold or um, insects or anything like that, just in case, this is going to take care of it um, because hydrogen peroxide kills mold and bacteria and insects and all that. Um, and this is the same mix that I spray my house plants with uh, to keep them healthy and I also spray the soil around them to prevent mold and all that stuff. Now you don't have to do this, this is just kind of an experiment that I'm doing and my uh, <laughs> uh, my asparagus have sprouted uh, already, one of them, so you know clearly it's not killing them. Um, it's It actually keeps my house plants healthy so I'm gonna do that and this also is really nice, this spritzer, because it's con it's a constant mis mister. If I can get get it to work, I just filled it. Hold on, there you go. You can see it's really nice, and it's a really fine mist. I love this thing. I'll also leave a link for this one down in the description box below. It's really fine and you can see it's not dislodging the, the uh, soil. The only soil that's being dislodged is the one that's like sitting at the surface on the plastic. Super fine. And I, I use it on my fiddle leaf fig and all that. Just I know some people say it doesn't do anything but I notice a difference for like water uh, for like missing your plant but because it has hydrogen peroxide in it I think it helps I'm just saying anyways so uh, I'm gonna cover this up and I gotta go feed my baby 
and I'll get back to you. So where did I put my dome? Did I put it on top of this? Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to put the dome over it. Oops. Stay in. And you can see these tags fit in, uh, in here perfectly. And I can read them on both sides. So it's really, really cool. Um, so I'll be right back and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more uh, about uh, onions and starting them from seeds. So I'll be, I'll be back in a second. I'm back. Okay. Yeah. So uh, once your seedlings germinate, as soon as um, they sprout, germinate, you're going to remove the humidity dome off the seedlings because what's going to happen if you have a humidity dome is it's going to drip uh, down on the seedlings from the accumulated moisture over the surface uh, on the top surface over here and uh, that can cause mold and mildew and diseases uh, to kill your seedlings and you don't want that. Uh, so as soon as they germinate just remove that dome. And uh, also once they germinate, you want to make sure to put them under either a grow light or in a very bright direct sunlight spot. Um, and um, if you have like a south facing window, you want to put them there. If you don't have, um, personally, I think having a grow light is the best option after uh, having uh, grown seedlings um, in direct sunlight. Without a grow light, uh, the seedlings never really seem to um, have uh, the best health. They're very dangly. They're trying to reach the light no matter how much you rotate them. So this year, uh, my husband and I built a grow light uh, unit uh, that we kind of DIY'd ourselves. And uh, if you guys are interested and you want the full guide, um, seed starting guide uh, for all the questions that you have about seed starting and how to make your own DIY grow, DIY grow light, I have a, an article on my website on how to do that and all the questions, answering all the questions that you have about seed starting and I will link it, link it in the description box below. Uh, so let's move on now and once your seedlings are about two to three inches you want to begin to fertilize them and to fertilize them you can use um, organic fertilizer that's my preferred method of fertilizing my food personally uh, but you don't want to fertilize them at full strength <laughs> serenity what are you doing um okay i'm filming now <laughs> hey baby, are you eating yummy, yummy food? Yeah. yeah. So you don't want to fertilize them at full strength. You want to fertilize them either at half strength, half strength, or uh, whatever the fertilizer that you are using suggests to use. I will link down in the description box below the fertilizer that I use for my plants. Um, and uh, you want to fertilize them about uh, once to twice a week um, uh, and not sorry not once to twice a week you want to fertilize them once a week or once every two weeks that's what I meant and um, again at half strength or whatever the fertilizer suggests on how to fertilize your seedlings and uh, also um, once the seedlings are about, uh, I would say, six inches, you want to uh, trim the onion seedlings um, about uh, uh, from one to like three, three inches down. So you want them to be the length of about three inches long when you do trim them. And what's that going to do is going to uh, cause them to grow thicker roots and they're going to be hardier and they're not going to be like super long and dangly. Uh, so they're going to be just better uh, ready for the uh, for getting outside. And uh, once um, the outside temperature is uh, uh, ready for planting, you no longer have hard frost. And uh, now onions can handle a little bit of frost, but not hard frost. Um, 
so uh, they can ho handle cold temperatures. But uh, so bef once the season is ready for planting, you want to start hardening your seedlings. And to harden your, se your seedlings, you want to take them um, the first for the first day. You want to take them outside for 30 minutes to one hour, um, and you don't want to put them directly in direct sunlight at the first uh, couple days because that's going to scorch them. Uh, so you want to gradually introduce them to sunlight. So um, just put them outside for the, for the first day for 30 minutes to one hour, and then you can increase that every day by 30 minutes to one hour. Um, and then also uh, you can like uh, every day you can kind of like push them closer to uh, the sun, so you can start in a shadier area and then slowly just expose them to more and more sunlight. Um, and that's gonna harden them off and get them ready for uh, planting for uh, when it's time to plant them outside. And then when you want to plant them, just put a hole in the ground and you don't want to plant them too deep because that's going to cause the bulb to uh, um, not expand. Um, it's going to kind of like grow in an oblong shape. So you want to plant them like where uh, the white of the bulb is. Um, put them in the ground and water them, fertilize them, do all the stuff and you should be good to go. Oh yeah. I did mention earlier also because you're gonna have a lot of seedlings in your um, uh, in your cells. Once you pull out the cell, you're gonna pull the outer onions first, and you want to gently pull it out from the bottom of the onion and um, pull pull away, and that's gonna pull the roots away. And if you want to like uh, kind of uh, um, just uh, fluff a little, fluff the bottom of the root ball a little bit, and that's gonna help to um, untangle the onions. It's kind of like untangling, detangling hair. <laughs> um, so it, it should be pretty easy. That's it for onions. Uh, now I'm going to be planting the rest of my seedlings. I'm not going to be showing this on the video, otherwise this video is going to be super long. So uh, uh, I'm just going to plant them and maybe I'll give you an update about them uh, in a different video once they are growing and all that. Uh, if you guys are interested in more gardening videos, you can check out this video over here. I'll probably link a playlist or some other video or both. I don't know. Whatever I do, it's going to be here. I think here. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Take care.